Hey everybody, thank you for joining me today. My name is Haley Gibson and today I'm going to talk about how your gut health may be destroying your life, your ability to hang out with people and have good relationships at work, outside of work, with your family, wherever it may be. Your gut health plays a really large role in your ability to function. So fun fact for the day, the adult intestines contain around two to four pounds of bacteria. This bacterial load is actually 10 times greater than the number of cells within our body. So that's really weird to think about, but we are literally um, living, breathing bacterial reservoirs. So we can't live without them. They're inside of us. We have to learn how to live with them in harmony and make sure that we have a good balance of gut microbes. Although we have been trained by society to dislike and often to feed bacteria and other, um, often to fear bacteria and other microorganisms, most of those that populate our systems work in harmony with us in what is called a symbiotic or a mutually benefiting relationship. And what that means is bacteria that live inside of us, they get fuel and nutrients from us, the foods that we take in. They're able to live and breed and um, live there. So what we get from them is that they break down our foods. They extract those nutrients from our foods and create usable forms of things like short chain fatty acids, um, vitamin B12, enzymes, and things of that nature. So antibiotics, at least for me, when I was growing up, antibiotics were my mom's go-to. Um, I know that that's true for many of us nowadays who are now adults. We look back at our childhood and we know that anytime we got sick, mom was just like, oh, take an antibiotic for it. We went to the doctor, take an antibiotic for it. Well, what that has done now has created um, superbugs. We, you know, bacteria develop just like we genetically develop, bacteria genetically develop and um, adjust to their environment. Well, if they're constantly exposed to antibiotics killing them, they do actually over time begin to change their genetics so that they are resistant to these antibiotics. So now we have things called superbugs and we give antibiotics and we're finding that it's not killing them. So these can become extremely harmful. We want to use antibiotics only when they're absolutely necessary, like severe cases. I do advise you to use natural antimicrobials and antibiotics as a last resort. Um, so antibiotics also tear down our gut lining. They also kill good bacteria, and by doing this, they impair digestion. So think about antibiotics and how it tears down your gut lining. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this on another slide. I just want to introduce for right now. It also does things like kill the good bacteria. So the good healthy microbiome that you start out with, or you may not even start out with one, but any good bacteria that you have, that antibiotic is also killing it. And then we're not re-inoculating with good probiotics. So that leaves us with gut dysbiosis. So if we think about where else we may be exposed to antibiotics besides the actual oral pill or IV medications, if you're eating chicken that has been fed antibiotics or pumped full of antibiotics in order to keep it from getting a disease while it is growing and eating and becoming produce, um, a product for us to ingest, the antibiotics in this chicken will also transfer to our own gut once we eat that. So that's one way you can be exposed. Um, drinking water is another way. Water is full of things like chlorine and fluoride. The chlorine in that water can actually kill off good gut bacteria and leave you exposed to develop something called yeast overgrowth. So having good bacteria in our gut is absolutely crucial for health. There are those, however, that are pathogenic in nature, and when they are allowed to accumulate in large numbers, this really brings about a lot of distress and disease. The ideal ratio of progenic or life-supporting versus pathogenic, which is disease-forming species, is 85 to 15, and we really want to keep that ratio as close to possible as that. When the pathogenic species grow beyond this ratio, problems begin to occur. 
So a little bit about who you're listening to before we go any further. My name is Haley Gibson. I'm a registered nurse. I'm functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. Sorry, it's a long name. Um, today I'm just going to be talking about gut health. Um, here you can see my picture as I work with Dr. David Jockers and I help address clients' issues and develop a customized plan for them. Um, you can also see to the left of that is a picture with myself and my fiance. I love him dearly. I'm really excited to get married in October. And then up above that, you can see the digestive system health panel. So this is a picture used in one of our links for a stool sample panel, which kind of goes hand in hand with what I'm talking about today. Um, I'll touch on that a little bit more, but essentially what that is going to do is look at what bacteria and or yeast and or parasites you have in your gut and how much is it growing or um, not growing. So is there overgrowth present? Is there too little good bacteria present? And then also it can look at something called secretory IgA, which we'll discuss. And then it also looks at different carbohydrates and enzymes and short chain fatty acids that let us know how you're metabolizing these things. So it's a super helpful test. If you're interested, go to drjockers.com and go to the lab testing site and you can see the digestive health panel is where you would find that stool test. So most of the microorganisms in our body work to support us. So they break down fibers and other large molecules into smaller, more bioavailable nutrients that our cells can actually utilize. They also help us to eliminate waste and other toxins. And then unfriendly bacteria, so pathogenic organisms and candida albicans, things like this are going to actually rob us of nutrients. So we become nutrient deficient, which can lead to hormonal imbalances, neurotransmitter imbalances, um, all sorts of things. And then the pathogens themselves actually secrete toxins that can lit, uh, leave us feeling brain foggy and just feeling terrible overall. So let's talk a little bit about the intestinal wall. So I talked about antibiotics tearing down that gut lining. I just want to shortly or briefly touch on that. I have discussed it in other videos, so I don't want to harp on it too much. But essentially, um, you have little junctions in between each cell in your intestinal lining, and they're considered tight junctions. And nothing should be able to get through those prematurely. So you're digesting food. It's coming through your intestinal lining. Or it's coming through your intestines. And it's surrounded by your intestinal lining. And there are walls that prevent large proteins or pathogens that are on your food. You have bacteria on all of the produce you eat, etc. It's everywhere. It's on the table. And then you touch your mouth. I mean, you're going to ingest pathogens on a daily basis. So this intestinal lining helps prevent that bacteria from going through there and it goes through um, the process of being digested and sterilized appropriately. So what happens is if you're taking antibiotics on a regular basis along with several other factors, it actually tears down that tight junction and that junction between the cells will widen and when they widen, this allows larger protein molecules or bacteria to get through into the bloodstream before it has been fully digested and sterilized. So this can put us at risk for infection, um, autoimmune diseases, and nutritional imbalances. So that would be considered malabsorption as well. So if you're having issues with absorbing protein, that could be one of the reasons. So. What happens as the food goes through the intestinal line in the intestines, sorry, it also crosses over these little things called Peyer's patches. So Peyer's patches, um, essentially the gastrointestinal wall and mesenteric lymph nodes, which is referred to as the gut-associated lymphoid tissue, is normally, um, you know, it normally has a good wealth of healthy microbes within it. So this region plays a powerful role in immune regulation through a key immunoglobulin globulin called secretory IgA. So essentially the payers patches will secrete these IgA cells into the cytoplasm and then that will be secreted over 
the permeable membrane. Basically, all that means is our immune system in our gut secretes something called aminoglobulin A. And the IgA is responsible for killing off the bad bacteria and regulating any potential threat of infection. So when pathogenic bacteria dominate the region for an extended amount of time, so let's say that we do develop where our gap junctions have widened and we have a lot of bad bacteria getting through and infesting the area, say it's present for an extended amount of time, well, our secretory IgA will become elevated at first. It's fighting it off, it's fighting it off, and then it'll get worn out. And eventually you'll see that number drop below normal. That's something that we see on the stool test quite frequent, quite frequently. I can't talk today, guys. So the secretory IgA will go up and then it will come down once it's worn out. So if we see that down, that's really telling us that you've had a chronic infection for a little while and it's something that needs to be addressed and boosted. <laughs> So once that IgA drops, you're also more susceptible to autoimmune diseases as well. So probiotics, which are life-enhancing bacteria, these are the good ones. These are a key inclusion in your diet. Um, you can either take it through supplementation or you can take it through food, and this really helps with Im immune regulation and overall wellness. So different probiotic species can be separated into what's called adhesive and non-adhesive properties based on their ability to adhere to the mucosal membranes. The greatest health benefits come from the bacterial colonies that are housed in the mucosal membranes. One of these benefits is that they help to strengthen the intestinal wall, preventing unwanted molecules from seeping through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream. So you can see here a few things that tear down the gut lining. We'll talk more about those on the next slide. And just kind of what I was talking about where that gap junction widens, you can see the arrow coming between. And all of these things are part of what makes that happen. So different things that may cause intestinal damage. These are things like dietary proteins, um, low stomach acid and enzymes. So if you're consuming you know, chicken, what do we need to really break down that chicken? We need a good amount of stomach acid. Proteins are not going to be broken down by taking a proton pump inhibitor to take away acid reflux. That's just going to minimize the amount of stomach acid you're secreting. Let's think about it like this. So if we need to absolutely degrade or um, eradicate something, and we're putting it in an acidic environment, we expect that to completely break it down and erode it and, you know, digest it. So we want our chicken to be exposed to a high amount of acid. Um, another thing that happens in the stomach, whenever you have your stomach acid secreted, you also trigger something called intrinsic factor. An intrinsic factor is necessary to absorb vitamin B12. So people who are taking things like proton pump inhibitors, this inhibits your stomach from creating stomach acid which inhibits you from secreting the intrinsic factor, which inhibits you from absorbing that B12, which can lead to a whole multitude of issues. So low stomach acid is absolutely important for killing off bad microbes that are on our food as well. So if we're taking proton pump inhibitors, essentially what that does is leaves our gut lining at risk for being broken down. Antibiotics kills off the good guys as well as the bad guys, so that does leave you at more risk um, for other infection. And I've already talked about antibiotic-resistant infections, blood sugar issues. So if you're eating a high sugar diet or carbohydrate diet, um, the fluctuation in blood sugar and insulin and inflammation, this can actually lead to the breaking down of the gut lining. Um, antibiotics are on there again pregnancy if you are pregnant you're more likely to have issues with your gut lining which makes sense because there's a baby squishing everything and um, it's just hard to regulate menopause with the hormone 
fluctuations that can definitely lead to some gut dysbiosis. Toxins, things we're exposed to on a daily basis, the things that build up on your car um, when you're not there and you come out and you're like, wow, my car is dirty. Well, those are things floating in the air constantly. You're breathing them in day in and day out, and those things will affect your gut lining as well. Food allergies, um, these are things that you're sensitive to, and this is different for everyone. This is related to, um, it can be related to environmental factors as well as genetic factors, and if you're, say you're allergic to eggs and you're eating eggs every day, this can result in um, tearing down that gut lining and leaving you more susceptible to, um, you know, bacterial overgrowth. And stress, stress is a big one. We know stress is the root of all evil. So the intake of processed foods, sugars, pharmaceuticals, fluoride, chlorine, artificial sweeteners, alcohol, and other chemical and industrial waste destroys the mucosal colonies, causing the intracellular junctions within the intestinal wall to become weak. So when this happens, it opens the door for opportunistic infections of pathogenic bacteria and fungi to take the intestinal rain of power basically so in addition large molecules and other toxins are able to easily cross the intestinal wall getting into the bloodstream causing havoc on the rest of the body so um, what can we do about it fermented dairy in the form of yogurt kefir amasi and liquid whey is amazing for the body um, however, fermented grass-fed dairy primarily contains L. acidophilus, L. bulgaricus, enterococcus thermophilus, and others that are all non-adhesive strains. So lactobacillus plantarum was the most common bacteria in the food of our ancestors, which includes sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, and brined olives. Um, lactobacillus plantarum has the ability to adhere and quickly colonize the intestinal mucosa. So in addition, it has been shown to compete strongly for food and resources with pathogenic microorganisms. So this minimizes their ability to flourish. In addition, key nutrients such as omega-3 fatty acids are preserved and carcinogenic nitrates and other toxins are effectively eliminated through the action of L. plantarum. So essentially what you should get from that is our bodies like a good dose of L. plantarum. Um, this can be found in sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, and brined olives, all really great fermented food. Um, if you handle dairy okay, then fermented dairy is great. Just be aware of sugar content in those. They're typically higher because of the lacto, um, sorry, got lactobacillus on the brain, but because of the lactose in those products. So just be aware of that. Um, coconut water kefir is great, a good probiotic. Um, Prescript Assist and ProBioCharge, those are two that we use um, at the clinic and with our clients online. So that is just a little bit about how to help that. So essentially what I wanted you to get from this was how your gut microbiome can actually cause things like bloating, brain fog, gas, um, anxiety, depression, lack of motivation, um, insomnia, issues sleeping, your gut microbiome can contribute to all of these things. So if you're struggling with something like this, let's look at the gut. Um, let's think about what could be going on there. You need to look at the body as a whole, but we're just finding that a lot of these issues do stem from the gut and nutritional imbalances related to gut dysbiosis. So that being said, if you're interested in asking more questions, please feel free to um, visit drjockers.com. Look up some free articles, look up free information, um, learn everything that you can about what's going on with your own health. You can also jump around the YouTube channel and see what else we got going on. And if you would like to work with someone one-on-one, -on -one, please feel free to email me at nutrition at drjockers.com. I'd be happy to help you. Um, evaluate what's going on and come up with a nutrition plan for you. Um, we also offer coaching not just in our clinic but long distance as well. So I hope you all have a great day. Thank you for listening.